There's no other injury that causes so many people so much misery. What happens is that your foot rolls violently underneath you, and the ligaments, those tough cords that connect bone to bone, just can't take it. They stretch, strain, or even tear. What you feel is the sharp pain, and after that comes the swelling and the drawn-out discomfort of an ankle sprain. The first few minutes are critical. If you treat a sprained ankle immediately, you'll save yourself all kinds of grief and discomfort later on. Here's what you do. Keep the shoe on, especially if it's a high top shoe. The shoe acts as a compression bandage. It'll help keep the ankle from swelling, and swelling's the enemy, remember? Yes, but how do you know if you have a sprained ankle and not something more serious like a fracture? You'll know. Most people have a sixth sense about these things. And the first thing you'll do is see if your ankle works. It may hurt, but if you're able to stand on it and try it out, it's probably just a sprain. If you're afraid to use your ankle, better see a doctor right away. If you try it out and you feel something grinding or feel a strange gravelly sensation, then you'd better get off the ankle and see your physician. It's probably something more than just a sprain. If your ankle hurts to hop off the court on the uninjured side, better see a doctor. It's probably something more than just a sprain. If your ankle feels numb or tingles, or if your foot feels cold at first, then you should certainly see your physician. If none of these conditions describes your ankle, then you've probably just sprained it. Now the question is, what do you do? Jane can show you what to do right at home. Here I am in the kitchen, right? Uh, but it can also be your home emergency room, and I'm surrounded by medical equipment pair of socks, disposable diapers, an ace bandage, a hammer, pair of scissors, bicycle inner tubing, a length of surgical tubing that you can get at any medical supply store or most pharmacies, a blender, dish towel, and a couple of plastic buckets. This is just about all you'll need to treat almost any sports injury. And as with most injuries, you've got to treat a sprained ankle right away. And that means treat it right where you're injured, before you go anywhere. The most important thing you can do for your ankle is apply compression and do it right away. And the only equipment you'll need is an elastic bandage and any soft, pliable material like some spare socks. It's a good idea to have an extra pair of socks with you anyway. Larry's going to help us out here with our demonstration. You're going to want something like a pair of socks or a couple of disposable diapers that you've cut into horseshoe shapes like this. For the purpose of demonstration, I'm going to use this because it's easier to see what I'm doing. You're going to wrap your horseshoe-shaped material with the curved part downward around your ankle bone on each side of your ankle. What this does is it fills in the hollows around your ankle bones. This provides equal compression to all areas of the ankle on both sides of the foot. If you wrap the ankle without using the horseshoes, the bandage would be nice and snug over the ankle bone, but wouldn't supply any compression to the soft hollows surrounding that bone. And that's where you hurt yourself. Without the horseshoes, you would actually encourage the ankle to swell out to the level of the bandage, and that's not good. Then you're going to wrap the entire area, horseshoe and all, with your elastic bandage. The compression doesn't have to be hard. If your foot gets warm and tingly or starts to discolor, loosen the bandage. It must be in the right place. Be sure the horseshoe makes pressure firm and equal all over the ankle, not just the ankle bones. And keep it on for 24 hours. The next thing to do is ice it, and the sooner the better. Icing has much the same effect as compression. It constricts blood vessels and other soft tissues to keep the swelling down. But don't use just any old ice. Icing doesn't do much good if the cold doesn't contact the entire injured area, and a block of ice or a bag of ice cubes can't get into all those nooks and crannies around the ankle. Crushed ice is the way to go. It can contour itself to the shape of the ankle. This is where the blender comes in. Put your ice cubes in the blender. You're going to want to put in about a cup or so of water, otherwise it's real hard to get crushed ice. And... And you have your own crushed ice. You're going to want to pour off the extra water, of course. Another way to do it, though, if you don't have a blender, is put your ice in the middle of a dish rag, fold up the corners, make a nice, tight little bundle, 
and whack it against the counter or a butcher block. It's a great way to get rid of aggression at the same time. It's what I do. <laughs> and there you have your crushed ice, which you're going to put into a plastic bag. Ziploc bags work especially well. And now with the compression bandage removed and the horseshoes off, you're going to loosely wrap your ankle with an elastic bandage. This is to avoid having to put the ice that you're going to be using directly on your ankle because the ice is going to be much too cold when it's right on your skin. And then you contour the ice around your ankle and strap it on with your elastic bandage. Try and stay with the icing for at least 20 minutes. Then put the compression wrap back on again. If you ice a couple or three times during the day, alternating icing with compression, it works especially well. Then elevate your ankle. Elevation prevents the blood from pooling down around your ankle and feet. That helps to reduce the swelling even more. Finally, don't use heat. No matter how good it might feel to soak your ankle in a warm tub, don't do it. It may go in looking like an ankle, it'll come out looking like a salami. That's because heat works in just the opposite way as compression and ice. Heat increases circulation by opening blood vessels and expanding tissues. That's the last thing a newly sprained ankle needs. Maybe later, after the bleeding and swelling have stopped, but certainly not now. If you've waited at least 24 hours since you sprained your ankle and the pain isn't increasing and it's not swelling anymore, now's the time to get rid of what swelling has occurred. A good way to do that is with contrast baths. Use a couple of plastic buckets. Fill one with ice water and the other with warm water straight from the tap. It doesn't have to be hot, just a little above body temperature. Or you could use a couple of waste baskets or a couple of big cooking pots. Anything that you can get your foot and ankle into. You can even run warm water into a bathtub and put ice water in a wastebasket. Try four minutes in the warm water to increase circulation and one minute in the cold water to constrict the blood vessels. Be sure that your ankle is covered as well as your foot. Now repeat this back and forth several times, four minutes in the warm, one minute in the cold. This helps flush your injured ankle. You're going to want to do this whole process again three or four times during the day. Ah, but there's a secret to doing it right. You have to move your ankle in the water. You've got to stay active in the heat. Try writing the alphabet with your big toe. Do it as big as you can, the biggest letters as you can. What this does is it forces you to use all the motions of your ankle, up and down, side to side. It's like giving your ankle an internal massage, twisting and turning the tissue, just like a masseur would do from the outside. 